If you've ever been in the Terraform registry or looked at a Terraform module, chances are you've come across pages that look like this. This is a module deploying a virtual machine that I wrote quite a while ago. I wouldn't use this today, it's not being updated. However, this will give you some overview information like the readme file, for example, a little bit of information about the module itself. And then you have things like requirements, what versions of Terraform am I running, what versions of Azure RM are we running. There's also other things such as what inputs do you need to add, which ones are required and what inputs are optional. Then you could have outputs. Outputs are also great because it'll show you once you've deployed this module, it'll show you what information can you work with. And all of this information exists because the author of the module wrote the readme. Well, kind of wrote the readme. I'm a bit ashamed to admit perhaps that in the beginning when I was starting with infrastructure as code and when I was starting to learn Terraform a while back, I saw these people creating these documentations. I saw the structure of a module and I, I didn't know of this tool that we're going to talk about today. When I started writing the modules, when I was just getting started with infrastructure as code, I was getting started with Terraform. I didn't know of this tool and I didn't know how people were able to create and maintain these uh, readme files. So I did what I usually do. I copied and then I tried to manually update dependencies, what resources I had. And I quickly realized that this is completely non-maintainable like if you've ever run the terraform docs tool you wouldn't know just how often like a small thing changes a bit of an output is changed a version is updated a new resource is added like like all of these things are stuff that's going to add up and your documentation is going to be outdated if you try and do it like i did so don't do that. I will have links to all this, but this is the repository for installing Terraform docs. And depending on what uh, OS you're running, I'm running Mac OS currently. So I've actually already installed this with Terraform docs and I can verify this. If I just go ahead and run Terraform docs, I get a help file. And this is a good indication that the program is installed. So that's all good. I do have a previous project of mine here where I deployed a key vault. I'm also deploying a resource group, obviously, to store the key vault. I think this was for my video of demonstrating ephemeral resources. So if you haven't checked it out, you just go ahead and do that. But stick around to the end of this one, of course, <laughs> first. What we have here right now then is that if I show you the left part, we can see I don't have a readme. So we don't have any documentation for this right now. And obviously this is perhaps not a complete module in that sense like there is some nuance to what should be a Terraform module and what should just be a resource configuration that you write in your own IDE for your project. I'm not entirely sure that I can speak for everyone but uh, what I try and, and maintain or what I try to strive at if I'm going to write a module or not is, is this uh, resource like is it a very complex resource that requires a lot of special configuration for our use case and maybe it only requires like one or two inputs then yeah I could make a module for it so it'll be easier for an Azure admin to deploy it? Or is it a module that will contain a lot of resources that are dependent of each other? Think about virtual machine. You have like the network interface card, you have the subnet, the virtual network, you have a like the data disks if you're using those. Like you have a lot of things. Maybe that's a good use case for a module as well. However, if we look at this resource for example this is maybe a very easy configuration maybe not something we wouldn't make a module for but the main goal here is not to make a module out of this the main goal is to display the terraform docs command so that when you do have a good use case for a module you'll just make sure that you use that and you'll be all set i'll actually go ahead and open up my terminal here and then like you remember from before we have the terraform docs command I can see it's still working. So we're going to look into this and there's like a, a few available commands for us. And, uh, and we are actually looking at the one that's called Markdown. So we can keep drilling into the help. By doing Terraform Docs Markdown help. And we got some more information. So we have two more commands. We can do a document or we can generate a table. I think generating a table sounds good. So let's create this uh, documentation. So we'll run Terraform Docs. We'll specify we want a markdown in the table format. I want 
to put a dot here because I wanted to focus on the current directory. It's in the current directory where I have all my Terraform configuration. That's where my resources exist, essentially. Then we want to say, actually, that we do want to have a output file and we can call this readme.md. So readme.markdown. And uh, let's execute this. So we can see the readme was updated successfully. And if you caught it in the left pane, a readme file was created. And if we right click on this file we can do a reveal or actually we do open preview so we get a bit of a, a better structure on what we're looking at so we can see we have two providers and what version they have or what requirements we have sorry and we do have a provider ash rm i'm actually not sure why the ac identity didn't show up in providers i'm thinking it would have I'm not using any modules so we don't have any module within a module here we do have a few resources so two resources actually and one data source the data source being my client config we don't have any inputs and we don't have any outputs so we could actually fix that so we could actually then declare two variables so we'll say the skew name and this is a string and we can add a description and this is important because this will also end up in the documentation so we need to make sure this is a good description we could actually also see that it takes soft delete retention in days, so we can do one for that as well. This is a number. So now that we have those, if we bring up our terminal and we rerun this command, and we head to the readme, we can see we have stuff on their inputs, so if we actually look at this... Okay, I'm not sure what happened. I, I added the variables, <laughs> so I could see that the input section actually had information in it, but the preview wouldn't load that information, so this was empty. So this is a good tip for you as well, I guess. I just did a... It'll be Control shift p For me, on a Mac, it's Command-Shift-P, and just did a reload window. And then when this came back, it had the information. But here we can see that we do have two inputs. So we have SKU name. I have the description that I added. And we can see what type it is and if it's required or not. So that's uh, how we add that. We could actually then just go ahead and define an output as well. I don't know. We'll do something stupid like a key vault name. So we'll do the name. Again, we just rerun this command once more. Open the readme, we can see now we have an output as well. Okay, I did want to play ball this time. So we do have the key vault name and then the description I added for it. And just imagine running this manually or having to update the documentation manually. That would be a nightmare because this is how quickly things change. Now there is actually another cool thing we could do. I don't know if you caught it, but when I was running Terraform Docs help, I actually did see there's um, an option for TFVARs. So we can generate Terraform.TFVARs of inputs. And that sounds very interesting because we do have two variables right here, but we don't have any variable files. So if I were to run this, I would have to specify at runtime, like what, what are the values for this, unless I add a, a default value, but we're not going to do that. So we will run Terraform Docs again. We'll specify TF vars, and then we need to specify HSL. If you're unaware, like if you're unsure what, what it is, it's just a second available command we have. So HSL will allow us to generate HSL HCL format on terraform.tfvar file. So that's why we have that. So terraform docs, tfvars, hsl, again dot for the current directory. I'll say an output file and that I guess I could just do dev.tfvars. I want it to be created in the same directory where I'm at. We'll actually do output mode inject as well. And as you can see, we have a dev.tfvars created. So I didn't have to make this one manually. So imagine like you have this in a pipeline or something. Obviously you would have the Terraform docs that generates the markdown files in a, in a pipeline as well. You wouldn't want to run this yourself all the time and we'll actually explore a use case for that in a little bit. But here I could set, so I want to have it premium. I guess it didn't realize that this was in numbers yet, but 
it is something at least and that's uh, that's a pretty cool thing now i'm i did mention that you wouldn't want to run this yourself all the time like what if you forget i forget things all the time i'm a human being that's just what I do. Uh, but there is this uh, Terraform Docs um, web page you can see here, and it has some information for GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions, unless you're aware, is uh, similar to Azure DevOps pipelines, or it's like their CI CD basically. And if we look at them, they actually do have a prepared template for this, which I think is pretty cool. What we want to do is we want to just, I'm just going to grab this file or this um, path rather. I'm going to go back into VS Code and I'm going to generate this file and I'm just going to copy this straight off. I think this should be able to be just the working directory should be just the one you're in. If I had a sub folder, perhaps I would do something like, yeah, I have my stuff in Terraform, but for the, for me, this works and the output file will be the readme and then just a bunch of extra parameters and if this would run on a pull request you could run this with different types like you could run it on a push to a branch you could do a, a few different things but we want to make sure that we run this at uh, on pull request and for the test i'm also just going to then delete the readme because we want to make sure this is an accurate thing that we're doing so this is actually not a git repository yet even so if i do a git status i don't see anything so i'm gonna fix that right quick okay so now you can see i've uh, i've made a private repository here i can show you it's the same code that we were working with and we don't have any readmes in this uh, repository there is one thing we have to do we have to go to settings we have to go to actions and then general and we have to set the workflow permissions here to read and write otherwise the it's not going to be allowed to push the changes to our pull request. And once back in our VS code, we can just create a new branch. Actually, I'll call it add tf docs. Although I already added <laughs> the workflow file for it. And uh, yeah, so we can also make a change. So I just want to show that this is going to work because on the variable of the SKU name, I'm just going to add the demo at the end. I don't know if it matters. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> Update docs, we can say, and we'll push this to our new branch. So back in GitHub, I can actually open this pull request and uh, I'm not going to, this is not a, a video about creating and managing pull requests. We're just going to create it now so we can trigger the workflow. So we should see, yep, there it is, uh, it's running a job for generate Terraform docs. If we actually click on it, we can see the status of it. It looks like it was successful, so you can see here that it uh, added a readme. So now if I go back to my pull request and if I go to files changed, we can see here's the change I made. But we can also see that we have a completely new readme file right now. And we can see that it inputs here for the SKU name. We can see it added demo as a part of it. So you can see it's responsive to what you're doing. But yeah, I think it's look good. So we're going to click merge and confirm that merge. I'm going to delete the branch. And then if we go to the main repository, we can see we have our module documentation. Pretty neat, right? And if it is interesting, you can see locally we don't have this, but if we Check out the main branch and we do a git pull. We get our readme. I can delete that branch at TF docs. So now it's not stored locally either. And then I have my readme. If I do a git log, I can see also the commit from the bot essentially. And it with a commit message of uh, that this is Terraform docs and this is an automated action. So yeah, this has been a demo of TF docs. There are other things that you would usually have in your pipeline. Perhaps you would run tools like TF Lint and TF Sec. And if those are of interest to you, let me know. I can make a video to cover that as well. But I hope you found this video interesting. Leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. So thank you very much for watching.